ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اعلموا عباد الله ان احسن الكلام كلام الله تبارك وتعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد ما دي brothers and sisters so welcome Ramadan last Friday we were just anticipating the beginning of Ramadan at night and today this is the first khutbah the first Ramadan the first Jum'ah in Ramadan now subhanallah for the past few days people were wondering it went so fast it's almost a week now so what did I do? What did I achieve in the past few days of the month of Ramadan? If you wonder, you ask yourself the question, what is the number one Ramadan good deed that I need to observe? What is the thing that I need to do the most or think about the most throughout the month of Ramadan? What is it? Is it uh, reading the Quran? Is it coming for taraweeh every single night? Is it finishing the 20 rak'ah versus the 8 rak'ah? What is it exactly that I need to observe the most? in order to see, to say that I have benefited a lot from the month of Ramadan. A lot of people when it comes to thinking of the best and good deeds, they always think of devotional deeds, which means you need to do something hard in order for you to feel that you've achieved something. Like fasting all day and breaking your fast at the end of the day, that's a great achievement, no doubt about it. Staying up all night doing taraweeh, even though you could go and be in, in bed because you have to go to work next day or go to school, that is again another great achievement. Giving from your money for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than what you usually do throughout the year, that's a great thing to do. But what is it that I need to maintain and need to think about to be number one Ramadan good deed that I need to observe? It's very simple. It's good manners. Akhlaq. Good manners. Why is that? Because when it comes to Ramadan, and as people fast, it seems that when people are they're, they're hungry, they go angry easily. Whether you're at home or at work with anybody. How many times you've heard people when you talk to them in Ramadan, and they just kind of about to heat, get heated up, they say, listen, I'm fasting today. Which means, don't let me go off on you right now. Whether you're doing this to your kids, to your spouse, to someone around you, why does it have to be that way? Why Ramadan means a justification to be rude? Why do people fast in order to end up being subhanAllah ill-mannered? Why? Is this what Ramadan is all about? That defeats the purpose. Because the purpose of Ramadan as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you might become righteous. Now here's something when it come to making good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many many ayat in the Quran concludes doing good deeds you know, by one statement, I'm going to recite a couple of ayat for you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ وَالْكَاظِمِينَ الْغَيْضِ وَالْعَافِينَ عَنَ النَّاسِ وَاللَّهُ يُحِبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, الَّذِينَ يُنْفِقُونَ فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ Those who spend their wealth and their money, فِي السَّرَّاءِ وَالضَّرَّاءِ During hardships and during ease, times of ease and prosperity. Like it doesn't matter if they have or they don't have. They always give. They have much, they have little, doesn't matter. They always give. This is one good deed. Ramadan is the time for it. People, they give generously, mashallah. Doesn't matter how much they have, how much they own. They keep giving and giving and giving. May Allah bless them and give them more, ya Rabbil Alameen. So that's one good deed. And then he said, Wal kadimin al ghayl. Those who, constr- who they control their anger. Especially in Ramadan. It is the time that we control your, you control your anger. Wal kadimin al ghayl. Those who control their anger. And then he said, Wal afina an nas. Those who forgive the people. Now look right now. From being good deeds of giving money and wealth to start working on yourself. Akhlaq and manners. You control your anger. You forgive the people. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes by saying, Wallahu yuhubbul muhsinin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves those who are muhsinin. And the meaning of muhsin, which is the essence of this whole creation is all about to show who's muhsin and who's not, is to be perfect in your good deeds and your best deeds. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tabarak, الذي بيده الملك وهو على كل شيء قدير الذي خلق الموت والحياة ليبلوكم أيكم أحسن عملا. He said سبحانه وتعالى, it is He سبحانه who created life and death. Means this whole life that we live is for what? It's a test. ليبلوكم to try you and test you أيكم أحسن عملا. Who will be most perfect in their good deeds? And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاللَّهُ يُحُبُّ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And Allah loves those who are muhsinin, who do good deeds perfectly. In the other ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about their reward, فَأَثَابَهُمُ اللَّهُ فَأَثَابَهُمُ اللَّهُ بِمَا قَالُوا جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, thus He reward them because of what they have said, means their good deeds, of the good akhlaq and good manners and good speech. Jannat. They will be receiving Jannat gardens under which, underneath which rivers are flowing. Tajri min tahtiha al-anhar. Khalidina fiha. Eternity living there. Wadalika jaza al muhsinin. And this is the reward of the muhsins. Those who do their things perfectly with good manners, good akhlaq. Now, subhanAllah, the same concept of ihsan, the whole concept of ihsan, the whole creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established is actually based on ihsan. Everything needs to be done with ihsan, which means with perfection. Look at the example when it comes to good manners. Good manners don't fluctuate. They don't change. They're always actually fixed. And it doesn't matter the circumstances. When it comes to being well-mannered, it's all the time. Well-mannered with the enemies, with the loved ones, with the relatives, with the strangers. Love and good manner, you'll be well mannered, depends. That's not about just for you, it's even for other people. You always maintain that good manners and that actually standard of character. Here's an example Yusuf alayhi salam. Yusuf alayhi salam, the story of Yusuf is all about trials. You want to think, think about your own trials and the test you're going through? Read the story of Yusuf alayhi salam. Every aspect of the surah is bringing another form of trial, another form of test. Test in regards to, you know, being in prison, uh, manners, ethical issues with relatives, you know, family feuds, you name it. All kinds of trials you go through, Yusuf went through more than, than you. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the surah, in two positions in the surah, the same ayah, or the same actually words. The first one, when he was in prison. When he was in prison... You know, when everybody goes to prison, they go depressed probably. I don't know what they do at the beginning and so on. But Yusuf alayhi salam, he was very well mannered. Even in prison. SubhanAllah, at some point, at some point, two young men, they noticed him. And they paid attention to his dealings with other people and so on. Can you imagine? This is the most, the most excruciating time of your life, being in prison unjustly for no crime that you committed at all. Yusuf, what was Yusuf's crime alayhi salatu was salam? His crime, he was just handsome, that's all. And he was in prison because of that unjustly. Still, he was well-mannered. The two young men, they came to him and they asked him, you know, we had, we had a dream. Could you please help us to interpret these dreams? And then they said, Inna naraka min al We find you among those who are muhsin, muhsinin. Like you, you, you seem to be, mashallah, very well-mannered, you know, very well-leveled person, like you're perfect in your deeds and your, your, your good manners. So they noticed that even in prison. Fast forward in the life of Yusuf alayhi salam, a few years later, many years as a matter of fact later, he comes out of prison. He doesn't come out of prison as an ordinary person. No. He becomes a treasure of Egypt at the time, one of the great nations of that time. The wealth of the world was in Egypt. And it was all under his now control as being the treasure of Egypt alayhi salam. And then we know the story, the drought the prosperity, the drought, and people starts coming, you know, asking for wealth and asking for provision from Egypt. And one of the time that was his family came, his brothers, they came in. He noticed them, he recognized them. And then eventually they, they, he sent them off afterwards to bring his, his brother next time when they came. And they, we know what happened in the story when he kept his brother with him. They came complaining, you know, please be nice to us, be kind to us. And what did they say about him? قَالُوا إِنَّا نَرَاكَ مِنَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ We see you of the muhsinin. Being in prison and being on the top of the world didn't make difference in his akhlaq and his manners. Didn't make any difference. It was always leveled. It was always perfect. It was always with ihsan. 
Being rich, being poor, being strong, being weak, it wouldn't change you at all when it comes to how you treat people, and how you have that level of akhlaq and good manners. It shouldn't change you at all. And Yusuf alayhi salam played that example. In prison, he was noticed, he was recognized as part of the muhsineen. Someone when he does, he does things perfectly. And when he, came, he became rich and wealthy, and powerful, so powerful, he could finish his own brothers. He could do whatever he wanted to do. No one would say anything to him. But we could see that his good man, that his akhlaq, the perfection in the way he dealt with people was even recognized. And they said, Inna narakam nal muhsineen. We notice that you are the muhsineen. You seem to be a good, reasonable person with good manners, well behaved. Now the question that I ask myself and ask you in this Ramadan, what is it that you care about the most? What is it? Do you care about, you know, coming first regardless if you're going to you know, run over people as you drive around and you don't care about, you know, parking uh, in the right place or wrong place? Who cares? Let the neighbors be upset with the parking spot. Anyways, is that what we're here for? That's not good manners. When you come to the masjid and all of what you care about is just you enjoy your taraweeh and you enjoy your salah and no one, you know, no one else. I don't care about anybody else. So whether you bring your kids or not, that I don't care. Because you want to enjoy it. That's not what Ramadan is all about. When it comes to now fasting, what do you say? What do you do? What do you watch? What do you hear? What do you observe? Because the best man is supposed to be first with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then with everybody else. So what is the level of your akhlaq, your manners? What is it that you actually observe in your, in your life? When it comes to the best and the number one Good deed of Ramadan should be actually that I start working on my good manners and my akhlaq. Why is that? Because that's the essence of our deen. That is the essence of our deen. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was present in the Quran in many, many ways. But the highest thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recognized the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with when he said, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, ya Muhammad, you are on a high standard of character. That is the highest recognition the Prophet ﷺ is getting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And why is that for? Why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning this in the Quran anyway? That's about the Prophet ﷺ. Because he's supposed to be our, our role model. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا That there was for the Prophet ﷺ, for you, there was a good model. أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا So that we follow his example, salawatu Allahi wa salamu alayhi. And here's some of the things the Prophet ﷺ, you know, was recognized even among the people. The people around him, sallallahu alayhi wa they recognized that. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, مَا كَانَ أَحَدٌ أَحْسَنَ خُلُقًا مِنْ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa no one ever, no one you could see back to that, at that time, an old time, that you will ever see someone who was well-mannered, better than the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi No one had a character that was more, you know, perfect and more beautiful than the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa character. And she said, مَا دَعَاهُ أَحَدٌ مِنْ أَصْحَابِهِ وَلَا أَهْلِهِ إِلَّا قَالَ لبيك. That no one ever called the Prophet ﷺ. Relatives, friends, sahaba, companions. But he responds immediately, Labbaik, I'm here, listening. Like he's always there for the people, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You call this a people's person. A people's person. And Rasulullah ﷺ said, أَحَبُّ النَّاسِ أَحَبُّ الْعِبَادِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَنْفَعُهُمْ لِعِيَالِهِ that the most beloved people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who are most beneficial to his dependents, which means the creation of Allah azza wa jal. Those who are most beneficial to the people. Being a people's person is part of good manners and akhlaq. And that was the character of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ramadan is all about that. Being a people's person. It's being about perfecting your manners and your akhlaq with the people. She said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again, no one ever called the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he said, I'm here listening. And that's when she quoted, she said, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٌ عَظِيمٌ Indeed, ya Muhammad, you are on a high standard of character. So what is then husn al-khuluq? Good character, what does it mean exactly? To perfect your manner, your akhlaq. It's the essence of our good deeds. Again, Ramadan, I know many people, they focus on the easy part. And that is to read the Quran from cover to cover. To come at night and pray. You know what? Even kids can do that. Trust me, I've seen kids standing all night, subhanAllah, you know, with a 20 rak'ah even. They read the Qur'an, Masha, probably better than me and you. But when it comes to good manners, and that requires a conscious effort. That requires a conscious effort to have good manners dealing with the people in time that is extremely, extremely difficult. When you believe 
that they don't deserve that good manners and good akhlaq from you. Well, when you are well-mannered, it's not about the people actually, it's about you. It's not about they deserving this good manners from you or not. It's you deserve to be the well-behaved and well-mannered person. And Nawas ibn Sam'an radiallahu ta'ala anhu ardah sa'ala al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an al-Birr. One day the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Nawas ibn Sam'an, Ya Rasulullah, ma huwa al-Birr? What is al-Birr? Al-Birr is the general term in the Arabic language that, inc- that includes everything, everything that is good. Everything that is good. The word Birr in Arabic language comes from the word al-Bar and ba ra ra in the Arabic language is actually trilingual root. That expands, explains what is considered spacious and has no boundaries. That's why in the Arabic language when it comes to the sea, opposite to the sea, which is the land, we call it al-bar. Because it has no boundaries. And that's why when you treat your, your parents in, in a good manner, what do we call this? Birrul walidain. The birr of the walidain means being dutiful to your parents in the best akhlaq and best manners. And that's why the people of al-Jannah were called Al-Abrar, because Al-Abrar, their manners and their akhlaq and their goodness and their goodness basically, their goodness is limitless. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even called the angels in the Qur'an, Kiramin Barara. He called them Barara, which means also again that the goodness of the angels is, just, is limitless. So he was asking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa about what is good, Ya Rasulullah? What's the meaning of doing good, Al-Birr? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, Husn al-Khuluq. Good character. And the word husn, even though we use the word good in English to translate the word husn, but it's a poor translation even. Because husn, as I said in the Arabic, it means perfection. Like perfect character. So to be a perfect human being, you're going to have to aspire to a high standard of character. That's what differentiates between people in this dunya and also in the akhirah. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, قَالَ خِيَارُكُمْ أَحْسَنُكُمْ أَخْلَاقًا Khiyarukum, the best among you are those who are best in, in their manners, in their character. Not in uh, how much Quran they read every day in Ramadan or how many rakah they pray at night. No, 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 no. What's the point of all of this if this person is going to be rude to his or her spouse? What's the point if this is going to be your way of dealing with your parents, or dealing with your siblings, or dealing with the loved one, and even your, your community? What's the point of this? So when it comes to Ramadan, the number one good deed of the month of Ramadan that you need to work on and observe is work on your character, work on your manners. The Prophet ﷺ says in the hadith, مَا مِنْ شَيْءٍ فِي الْمِيزَانِ أَثْقَلُ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ مِنْ حُسْنُ الْخُلُقِ In Surah Abu Dawood, Abu Darda, and I read the Prophet ﷺ said, there is nothing heavier in the scale with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Day of Judgment than حسن الْخُلُقِ, that perfect character and perfect manners. So what does it mean then? What does it mean when we say husn al-khuluq? And what, does that, what do I get out of this? Al-Hasan al-Basr rahimahullah ta'ala said, حَقِيقَةُ husn al-khuluq badl al-ma'roof The essence of having good character is always doing good. At all times. Badl al-ma'roof which means to do that which is good all the time. So it's not contingent upon what you... It's, you don't reciprocate what people do to you. No, 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 no. You do it regardless whether they reciprocate that or not. Whether they return that favor or that goodness from you or not. It doesn't matter that you always actually do that which is, which is good. And he said, وَكَفُّ adha That you abstain from hurting people, وَطَلَاقَةُ الْوَجْ And having a cheerful face when you meet people. That's the essence of حُسْنُ الْأَخْلَاقِ And uh, a lot of ulama, when they describe it, they say that even مَنْ سَاءَ خُلُقُهُ ضَاقَ رِزْقُهُ If your manners are going to be constrained, which means you're going to have ill manners, that would result in having your rizq will be constrained upon you. Your provision your life will be tight upon you. You know, people don't like ill-mannered people. They don't like that. You're going to get fired easily. You're not going to have good company, good friends around you if you're ill-mannered. They need someone who will be cheerful with them. Someone who will be, they will know that when I associate myself with this person, I will get something good out of it, inshallah tabaraka wa ta'ala. So what's the meaning of then having husn al-khuluq? Or how can I get that? What are the signs of having good manners? One of the ulama was asked once, how do I know that I have good manners? He said, أَنْ يَكُونَ كَثِيرَ الْحَيَاءِ So you have a lot of shyness. When we see shyness, it's not bashfulness. This is not the weakness of the character. No. You're shy, meaning when there's something that is wrong, you stay away from it. But if something right, you're strong, and you take care of it. قَلِيلَ الْأَذَى That you don't hurt people. You don't hurt other people. كَثِيرَ الصَّلَاحِ 
has a good upright character. صدوق اللسان Truthful. When they speak, they tell the truth. قليل الكلام كثير العمل They speak less, but they do more. Means they actually they always work on what they claim, what they say. قليل الزلل You may they make less mistakes. Why? Because they're always conscious of what they do. They didn't just go follow their desires. They're conscious of what they're doing. قليل الفضول they don't stick their nose in every, everyone else's affairs. You know, they always keep it for themselves. Most of the time, they keep it for themselves. Barran is righteous. Wasulan, connect with the people and the relative, and relatives. Waquran has that sense of, of haiba, which means sense of dignity. Sabur has patience. Shakur, grateful. And, and mention a lot of actually qualities. A lot of qualities. But the bottom line is that when you deal with the people, you remember one thing. My dealing with the people is actually dealing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When I deal with the people, that's how I present myself to Allah azza wa jal. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam again, he said that the most beloved people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who are most beneficial to his dependent, to his creation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those who are well-mannered, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And those who will always be helpful to other people, Ya Rabbil Alameen. I say this word, and I pray to Allah for you and to you. And to the Muslims, I pray to Allah, and He is the Lord. الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا ثم ما بعد ما دي brothers and sisters we talked a lot before Ramadan about what you need to do in order to make your Ramadan the best Ramadan ever and you have probably been doing mashallah a lot of these good deeds i want you to pause and think about it if what you're doing is causing you to cut ties with relatives and and, and loved ones if what you're doing is causing you some, causing some tension between you and community members and, and, and co-workers and so on, then I want you to check back again what you're doing. Is this beneficial? Go back again and see if this is affecting the quality of your akhlaq and your manners with the people. This is the number one Ramadan good deed that you need to observe and work on. Your character, your akhlaq and your manners. Okay, is it going to be an easy job? Nope. Especially if you're not used to it. If you're, not, if you're not used to always doing good, regardless of what people do, it's going to be very difficult for you to do that. So what do I do? Keep trying. Just keep trying. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala, he said, Al-khayr ada, goodness is a habit. Which means when you keep practicing something over and over again, over and over again, over and over again, inshallah ta'ala, the habitude of doing good will result in being, becoming part of your character. Becoming part of your character. Now what is the character of a human being anyway? It's just a, a set of habits that you do on a regular basis that becomes your character overall. So make sure that you keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. Doing good deeds and having a high standard of character is actually the sign of prophethood. This is from the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. He has that perfect character sallallahu wasallam alayhi. We're not going to be prophets or anbiya, not at all. But at least we're trying to follow that example. And this is the chance for us, inshallah ta'ala, during the month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us patience, ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting, ya Allah. And accept our qiyamah, our dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our good deeds, ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'na, wa anfa'na bima alamtana, inna kanta al-alim al-hakim. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha, wa zakkiha anta khayru man zakkaha, anta waliyuha mawlaha. Ibad Allah, inna Allah malakaita salluna ala nabi, ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik ala nabina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Warda Allahumma anwa khulafaa al-rashidina bibakin wa umara wa uthmana wa alihi, wa ansaar al-sahabati ajma'in, wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsa'i liyum al-deen wa aqim al-salaam.